Welcome to the Vision by Protivity podcast. I'm Joe Kornick, Editor-in-Chief of Vision by Protivity, our global content resource looking to the future and examining big themes that will impact the C-suite and executive boardrooms worldwide. Today, we're exploring the metaverse and its implications for business, and I'm very excited to welcome longtime technology expert, Julie Tregertha, to the program. Julie is Area Vice President for Coupa for Africa and the Middle East, where she heads up a team responsible for the promotion of Coupa, a software company based in San Mateo, California. She has been a leader in the IT industry for more than three decades and resides in South Africa. Julie, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Joe. It's lovely to be here talking to you today I'm from Johannesburg, South Africa. And I'm really excited about this conversation we're going to have. Right, Julie, you've been a, a, a leader in the IT industry uh, there in South Africa for over three decades now. So there's a lot about technology that I'm curious to, to sort of drill down and, and ask you about, specifically about the metaverse. There are many implications to the metaverse, right? And there's technologies that will enable it. I mean, we've heard a lot about them, Web 3.0, XR, you know, AI, 5G, blockchain, et cetera. The list goes on and on. So which ones are you most excited about uh, as, they, as we start to move into the metaverse and why? Joe, I think you're right. There's a lot of different aspects to the metaverse from a technology perspective. And actually, all of these pieces have to come together because it's not going to be underpinned by one thing. It's going to be underpinned by so many different pieces and, and elements. It's hard to pick one that I think is, you know, for me, most exciting. But I think the one that maybe we just relate to the most is the XR piece, you know, extended reality, um, everything from what we understand as reality today through the spectrum of augmented reality and to virtual reality. And I think along with that, the the devices and the hardware and the capabilities that you're going to have through different XR technologies that are really going to open up this new world of the metaverse to us as consumers. So maybe that's the piece that I, I found most intriguing for me to get excited about 5G network you know, it's it's just got to be there and it's got to work, but it's not something that you're necessarily going to touch and feel. It's more an enabler. So pe- perhaps that's why I, I feel that the the XR piece is the most interesting. But having said that, all of these all of these aspects have to you know come together, work together, and obviously reach the right technology level that they need to be at in order for the metaverse to really become something that's real. Right. And that's interesting because, I mean, XR, certainly there's been a lot of advances over the last several years. There's been some, uh, you know, I think as those devices get smaller and, and more user friendly, we'll probably see a, lo- a lot more adoption. I mean, I think we tend to think of them in the on, from a gaming standpoint, but I'm, I'm more curious about how you think businesses will use the metaverse and particularly, you know, maybe they'll be using XR. I'm not even sure. But what are some of the ways that you think, you know, strategic business leaders will be leveraging the metaverse I think it's really exciting. Uh, We're right at the beginning of that journey. Um, If you have a look at the metaverse up to now, it's certainly uh, occupied a bigger role in the sort of consumer space. And the, you know, companies that are starting to experiment um, and invest in this are very much consumer-related businesses, FMCG, retailers, big brands, Um, You know, those are the the first movers, but that it's definitely, in my opinion, not going to end there. And I think that irrespective of the industry that an organization plays in, I don't think they can ignore what impact this is going to have on their market, their customers, whatever those customers, you know, look like and how they behave and and interact with those customers. But they're going to have to consider this. And I think that you know, there, there's so much opportunity. I think there are, there will be so many use cases across different industries that will emerge. They're not necessarily known yet. They're not necessarily documented. Nobody has necessarily put those out there yet. But I, I think as we move more and more into the space, the, the use cases will come out that we, you know, that we maybe don't even think about today. The one that I think as well um, pops into my head because it's across industry is training. You know, if you are trying to train using inter- in, in this type of technology internally to train users, train cus- uh, your, your employees in, a, in, in something and could be anything, um, whether it's putting together a, you know, a components of a product that you're creating or if it's, um, you know, in the healthcare industry and you want to practice how to do a tra- heart transplant, it, it doesn't matter. I think there's going to be a lot of cases where 
the metaverse can be used for for training, education, um, learning more of how the world operates in in a particular business. I have to say, when I talk to business leaders, there is a lot of, or maybe not a lot, but there's a, there's a fair amount of skepticism out there about the metaverse and its its overall impact. And I'm just curious your thoughts on that. I mean, is that warranted? I'm just curious when you think about uh, if you're talking to, to business leaders that are a little bit more skeptical about the metaverse, you know, what do you sort of say to, to maybe ease their minds? My view is um, I don't think it's warranted. I don't think it's warranted. And I say that because I'm fairly, I, I, I'm fairly comfortable that this is going to be a wave that is going to come. It is definitely going to come and it's definitely going to impact and affect every one in terms of the way that we operate in our in our world yes it's complex it's very undefined you know you you look for a definition of the metaverse today and you come up with so many different things it's vague um it's confusing uh, it, it, there's very few people that really that even i speak to who understand this whole world it, it is actually quite overwhelming so I think that's where the skepticism is coming from. It's more based on a lack of understanding and a fear, perhaps, than based on any you know, you know, uh, justified um, view that this is just really going to remain something that is you know, um, going to be out there, but it's not going to affect me. I think that it is coming. Um, and I think if you have a look at some of the big organizations that we know have a massive impact on all of us, Apple, um, Meta, previously Facebook, you know, these organizations are investing, Microsoft, they're all in for investing a huge amount of money in this wave. Um, it is maybe still regarded as hack. There is views that it's a metaverse bubble. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's not going to remain out there as a, um, you know, as just a peripheral, you know, thing. It, I, I really do believe that the imp we maybe we don't know what the full impact is going to be today, but it is absolutely going to be part of our future world. You know, that sort of leads me to my next question. I was going to sort of throw around some of those global economic impact forecasts, right, uh, for the metaverse for, let's say, 2030 and beyond. I mean, they're all over the map, everything from a little under a trillion dollars to all the way up to 15 trillion dollars, depending on which particular study you, you look at. Would you categorize, I mean, if I were on the scale of the metaverse being sort of a nice complementary niche platform for, you know, some companies to take advantage of versus all the way to sort of a revolutionary game changer for global business by, you know, 2030 and beyond, where would you fall on that on that spectrum? Uh, I believe it's going to be a revolutionary game changer. My caveat is in your question by 2030. I think that is the piece that I wouldn't necessarily hang my hat on. I do believe it's going to be a revolutionary game changer, but I think it might take a slightly longer time frame to get there to that point where then 2030. For many, many years, the way that we discovered and purchased and consumed goods and services was through physical interaction. You know, it was visiting a store, picking up a product, touching and feeling it, um, you know, attending an event or booking a service. And, and that was where we did things. Then the internet came around and e-commerce platforms started to pop up, pop up and rival, you know, the offline world. And then what happened was we got hit by COVID. Uh, and COVID really changed everything. And if you look at, and I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning this because I think it comes back to and touches this, why a revolutionary game changer. If you look at what happened with COVID and how it changed so many different elements of our lives, you know, physical stores closed and the only way that you could really purchase anything was on an e-commerce platform. Um, it became the sole por portal to, to, to purchase and to get goods delivered. Social engagement was restricted to telecommunications and social media networks. Um, and, you know, obviously COVID also changed the way that we work. Um, you know, companies had to switch over to Zoom and Teams overnight from being office-based, face, you know, face-to-face -face, um, on site. Um, other industries, the, the entire entertainment industry came to a massive, just a complete standstill. Um, and even manufacturing industry, you know, factories were closed and, and, you know, their plants shut down because, you know, they laid off workers. So you think about the changes that we've gone through and how those things managed to create a drastic shift 
and the way that we do things. Now the world's semi-returned to normal, and yet I'll bet you that most people are still engaging with the e-commerce portal to do, you know, their shopping. Um, they, they're still working on teams and, you know, people are not back in the office full time. So, so the adoption of this technology was kind of all forced, it, 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 you know, forced because of circumstances. We had to find a way to keep our lives and our world running, even though we were all locked up, up into our homes. And I think um, the, the metaverse really points to the next kind of generation of that, the, the next creation of an alternative solution um, to, to the way that we're operating to, to really enhance um, how these technologies have impacted our lives, but taking them to the next level. Right. And you've mentioned several sectors and you've mentioned some sort of service lines like like supply chains and, you know, from a sector base, we've heard manufacturing, we've heard healthcare, we've heard some potential success stories. Uh, do you have any thoughts on what sectors you think have the potential to sort of be the most disrupted or transformed by the metaverse? Joe, I think that it's going to affect all industries. I think any industry that thinks they're free from being affected by the metaverse is going to be naive in that thinking. I do think that the B2C type of industries are going to land up looking at this first, because again, it's where does their target audience hang out? Um, and if you have a look, you know, today at where people are hanging out, um, it's quite extraordinary already how many people are uh, visiting um, some of these metaverse worlds and how many hours are being spent, uh, perhaps not by my generation, but certainly some of the, you know, the Gen Z and even the Gen Alpha, you know, the next generation. Um, in fact, it's quite scary, I think, how many, um, how much time is being spent there. So, you know, I think that the, those, the, the B2C, the, the, organized, the industries like FMCGs, the big brands, um, the, uh, the retailers, um, you know, if they want mindshare, brand awareness, um, they want to find subliminal ways of, of, of reaching their, their target audience, I, I, I mean, it's already happening. They're, they're already doing this. Um, Samsung, you know, has uh, bought land in Decentraland, um, JP Morgan's opened a virtual bank, um, you know, and, uh, and there's other examples. So I think there, there's, there's definitely industry uh, industries that are going to go there first and go there early. I think the entertainment industry is going to be very, um, be looking at this in a big way. Uh, I mean, uh, fascinating that Justin Bieber did a Metaverse concert in 2021 and attracted 10.7 million viewers. Um, so I think it's it's definitely um, the entertainment industry and events um, industry, which was so badly hurt by COVID. So I think for them, it's it's kind of not only a way to maybe to recover, but also a very interesting way to reach a much larger audience than what they would traditionally if they were trying to do just a Madison Square Garden concert. Um, I think there 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 is then the opportunity in the corporate space and I think if you have a look, I mentioned JP Morgan. So FSI, uh, financial banking insurance, you know, those, those organizations are often quite sort of forefront of adopting technology. They're often quite pioneering. They've got the pockets, deep pockets to look at how to invest and how to better service their customers. Maybe it is more around trying to create a far better service oriented, you know, environment for uh, an experience for their, for their customers. Um, I think the other one, which is really interesting, is I mentioned healthcare from a training perspective, but, um, um, you know, there's, there's talk about Philips, as an example, creating their own corporate metaverse, which really becomes a destination for patients to go and get access to virtual healthcare, you know, um, and I think that's really interesting. Um, that is really exciting. Right. And, and Julie, thanks so much for all this great information. I have just one more question for you. I just want to wrap up by asking you to sort of look out into the future, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, as far as you, as far as you want in terms of when you think the metaverse will really be making a major impact on, 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 our, on all of our lives. Paint me a picture of what's possible. What, what aren't we, what am I missing? Like, what aren't we thinking of? I think the view... 10, 15 years out is a scary one and it becomes a controversial one because you have this potential vision where people sit in their homes, in their lounges, 
with their virtual reality headset on. Uh, they go to the office, their virtual office, and they sit in a boardroom with have meeting with their team, but they actually don't leave their lounge. Uh, when they want to buy something, they go to the virtual mall um, and they go and try on clothes and uh, check out the new latest coffee machine and you know experience the latest set of golf clubs um, and then pick which one they want to buy. Um, and they don't even have to go on holiday because they can go and choose to walk the Great Wall of China or go up the Eiffel Tower um, or go and look at the Niagara Falls and they don't even leave their lounge. So if you want to really be extreme and, as I said, controversial, you know, that is a view of the future. I think the movie Ready, Pl Ready Player One encapsulated some of that where really we all live in a virtual reality. We all, all live in an alternate universe um, and we actually almost want to leave our reality because maybe it's not that great and I think that is a you know do I see that happening not for me um, not for me because I wouldn't want that and I think for me it's really important to still embrace reality and um, you know have physical contact with people and things and but I think that is a that is a scary view um, out there because I think the possibility could exist that you maybe never have to leave your lounge. Um, and that, that, that is a scary possibility. And that starts introducing so many other um, very, very, you know, tricky con conversations, psych psychological and mental and physiological um, impacts of the metaverse on the human race. So I, I'm hoping that it maybe doesn't get to that extreme. I'm hoping that it really becomes, you know, as um, smartphones didn't stop us talking to each other face to face. Um, it was it was revolutionary in that it created and connected the the, the world, and not only telephonically, but it, from a you know social media perspective. But it didn't necessarily replace our face to face contact. So I'm hoping that maybe the metaverse it, it's going to alter our world, but hopefully enhances it and it doesn't replace some of those really cool things which are essential to being human. And that's what we've got to hold on to. Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Pleasure, Joe. Thank you for having me. And um, thanks for the opportunity to have the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, this was fun. And thank you for listening as well. Please rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And be sure to check out all the great Metaverse content we currently have online at vision.protivity.com. I'm Joe Kornick. We'll see you next time.